Hello, I'm Brian Foster, and I am here to talk about Spiritism. And today we're going to talk about Luke chapter 17, verses 22 to 35, the coming of the kingdom. What does it mean? Well, let's get right into it. And he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Lo there, or lo here, do not go, do not follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, and they were given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So it will be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let him who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let him who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to gain his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. Now, I was always curious about the sentence, let him who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come back to take them away. And likewise, let him who's in the field not turn back. In my younger days, I imagined the people running away from a mushroom cloud explosion, trying to outrun the blast zone. I grew up in the generation where, where once a month we had to hide under our desks in preparation for a nuclear attack. The advice was to flee immediately, take nothing to slow you down. Like many others, I interpret this literally. In the movies, the destruction of Sodom was usually depicted as great energy beams raining down destruction. The people inside the city were dying gruesome deaths, while the select few were fleeing. But right after I had this vision in my mind came verse 33. Whoever seeks to gain his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will preserve it. In the first sentence, Christ said to run and not look back. But now he seemed to say to accept your death. This made no sense to me. And I could not reconcile it. Two opposing statements. The first, an admonition to get out fast. And the second, to lay down your life. Which is it? Flee or surrender when the Son of Man is revealed? Well, the answer is neither. Without Spiritism, the true answer is difficult to unlock. In the first verse, the reference to take nothing and not look back notifies us that we have nothing of value to retain in our transition from the physical to the spirit realm. Anything you thought was of value is not. When the light of Jesus comes upon you, release all material bonds. The next verse implies that holding on to your physical life is foolish. That is not your real life. Your true existence is in the spirit realm as an immortal spirit. Hence, life is not rooted in a dense physical body, but in the ethereal covering of our own choosing, our paraspirit and spirit. The comprehension that we are immortal refills the facade of our simulated existence on earth for what it is a campus, whereby we are guided through trials, customized for each one of us to improve our character and personality, to rip out the primitive urges and drives, replace them with love, charity, fraternity, and honesty. Heavenly life awaits us when we rise upward to the freedom of the spirit realm. This explanation is further reinforced when Christ tells us that one will be taken and the other left meaning the person who has worked hard on their spiritual attributes will be lifted, and the person remaining will experience the result of a life lived in material pleasure, where for the one who stays behind, eventually the vultures, reference of Luke 
chapter 17, verse 37, shall consume the material body while the spirit looks on, still tied to the planet. The ignorant spirit will still roam the lower zone, waiting to either be rescued by a spirit guide, if they decide to change their outlook and seek higher help, or to be incarnated again to once more trek through the required lessons. Spiritism supplies us with the certainty and reasons for multiple incarnations. Each of us must take the journey from a primitive spirit, driven by our base instincts, to the plateau of a more advanced spirit, guided by love and wisdom in the service of others. Hence, the transitory nature of our physical interludes is explained, each one a valuable step in our journey to become a pure spirit to someday finally utilize the power of our mind to create great planets, civilizations, and free will beings who shall be guided upon the path to the light. This is our destiny. Our time on earth is as short as we make it. By passing each test and fully integrating the lesson within us, we shall emerge from our gross desires and climb the spiritual ladder to become a fully productive member of the army of Christ. If you'd like to learn more, please read my book, The Spirit Realm. It will tell you what is a spirit realm, how the physical realm is a subset of the spirit realm, what are we doing here on earth, we must learn on this campus called earth, it's our great simulation, how we, when we come back to heaven, how we rise as a spirit, and what is the future of earth and the future of each one of us. God bless.